Hello everyone, this is Madhusudan Raj. I'm here in front of you again with my new video economic analysis and today I want to focus on this new uh, so-called policy of make in India, the new policy of uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. A week ago, uh, Modi, uh, Narendra Modi announced his uh, make in India you know, campaign or is a new kind of policy. He's saying that uh, do not treat FDI as foreign direct investment but something like uh, first uh, develop India. So we will we want to talk about that you know what is so <clears throat> the question which I want to ask that uh, what is so great about this whole movement of making things in India why make things in India, for example? What is the need of making everything in India? <clears throat> so first of all, you know, as I said, let's see the economics of all these things. You know, making in India is only kind of you know profitable for all of us, not only for uh, the um, Modi government, but also most importantly for the consumers of this country. You know, 120. 5 crore people when that is you know kind of profitable only when manufacturing production in India is you know happening at the least possible cost at the lowest possible cost and with the highest quality of product because remember one thing that the only way in which we can you know uh, create this so called you know welfare social welfare or welfare of consumers is by providing them you know best quality products at the cheapest possible price and that is only possible when production is taking place at its least you know what we call least average cost you know basically lowest possible cost right now things are not being produced into india simply because you know cost is very high because the indian economy is highly inflationary and the biggest hurdle which you know people face to you know start their business into India is the government of India itself and it's all kind of lunatic regulation policies you have to take you know hundreds of licenses right but even before we start your simple tea stall or a, or a pan masala shop right so in this kind of environment it is simply not possible to do business and Modi is saying that he's going to Know, kind of simplify all these things although he's not promising that he's going to en dismantle any of the bureaucracies which are coming in between the buyer and the seller so he's saying that we have to make things in India see uh, a smell of this thing you know that Narendra Modi is a Hindu nationalist leader uh, and that's what he himself kind of you know, um, you know admitted so the smell which I am you know getting from this whole policy and which is pretty obvious to me is that nothing but uh, very you know kind of you know cheap nationalistic you know you know bundugala the type of you know it's just to spread nationalism you know as I said uh, this Modi government is kind of pitching for this thing make in India if you if you know sound economics then you know that this is Nationalism is never going to help anyone. It's never going to help the consumers, never going to help the producers, never going to help anyone. You know, as I said, the, the, the condition for making things in India is that it must be cheap to make things in India and the product must be of high quality. Only then the consumers are going to demand it. Both these things are right now not possible in India. And I don't see in the foreseeable future that situation is ever going to change because Modi is all talk, talk, talk. Is not about any kind of action. So what's so great about making in India? As I said, there's nothing great. You know, see, if we can, you know, import things from outside at a much cheaper prices and a better quality products, then nothing wrong in you know importing things. You know, recently uh, <clears throat> this uh, RSS, you know, chief uh, Mohan Bhagwat, he said that. Uh, the lust of the Indians for the Chinese product is kind of deplorable. A lust, lust for the Chinese product. We don't have lust, you know. We, we should be thankful of all, all the Chinese manufacturing houses that they are providing all these cheap, you know, consumer products and other items to the people who want to consume them. And by providing those products at the, you know, affordable prices, they are making everybody's life better. It's not lust, it's just a necessity of everyone. 
Right? So there is nothing wrong in importing things from outside if you can get it for cheaper. Right? If you are going to make things in India and if it's going to be costly, then overall it is going to you know, harm the Indian economy, it's going to harm the Indian consumers and everyone. So there is no point, it's just a nationalistic kind of, you know, just trying to spread nationalism, that's what Modi is doing since long. And there is nothing great about producing things in India as long as things are not economic. See, people, you know, business people will come to India and produce everything over here if the conditions are favorable. Means if it is profitable. Right? As long as it is not going to be profitable, no business is going to come to India and produce anything in India. And as I say, producing in India is not even possible. Making everything in India is not even possible. Anybody who understands, you know, international trade and, you know, resource availability, the spread of resources all around the world, it's, it's all unequal. Right? Indian manufacturing houses, Indian, you know, Companies cannot make everything on their own because we don't have all the products, you know, all the raw materials and the capital and the, the capital know-how and the human capital and the physical capital and the raw labor and, and such things, you know, factors of production available in India. Right, India, for example, the main, you know, source of all the production, energy consumption, oil. You know, around two thirds of that we import from outside. So how how is you know make things in India is going to be possible? So this whole inward looking policy of self in the you know what they call self independence is 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 something which is futile, right? As I said that if something is available at cheap price from outside, we should be importing that. In any case, without the imports of all these raw material and capital goods and you know knowledge and everything making in India is not going to be possible. So we should be, in fact, instead of making things in India, we should be opening up our border for free foreign trade. That will help everyone. That will not only help India, that will also help everybody because, you know, then you'll have a division of labor, international division of, we can tap into international division of labor and specialization. Right. Uh, while launching, so there's nothing great about making things in India. When um, There is also one more thing. Uh, when launching his program, uh, Narendra Modi said that why he wants to do this, he said that, uh, <clears throat> for example, uh, Prime Minister pointed out that it was crucial to increase the purchasing power of the common man in order to boost demand and thus spur development. So what he's saying basically is increase purchasing power to boost growth. So let us for a, for a minute, you know, reflect on this statement of Narendra Modi. So what he means basically is that if he increase the purchasing power of Indian consumers, then they will consume more, they will demand more, and that will spur the growth, and that will you know create development. So what truth lies in the you know is this a sound kind of economic statement? Well, obviously not. It is not at all a sound economic statement because this is nothing but the old and known Keynesian fallacy that consumption drives you know economic growth or consumption is responsible for economic development remember consumption doesn't drive you know economic growth consumption is not the driver of the car of the indian economy if i use the keynesian language consumption is not a driver of growth actually it is abstaining from the consumption saving and then investing and then accumulating physical and human capital that's what will spur growth if you're going to consume everything right now that is not going to result into higher economic growth in the future right because for what is the meaning of economic growth economic growth means higher production of goods and services and that is only possible when the saving and investment is available Right, if saving and investment is not available because Indian consumers are going to consume whatever they are producing, then how all these business people are going to, you know, go and buy land and capital and go pay salaries to the laborers? And in the absence of all those investment activities, economic growth is simply not possible. Right, Narendra Modi is making a mistake basically, which all the Keynesians make of seeing consumption as a driver of economic growth. Consumption is not the driver of economic growth. 
Economic growth is driven by first producing something, producing more than what you are consuming, saving the difference, investing the difference, accumulating physical and human capital, and that's how your future economic growth and future income is going to increase. Not by consuming everything. Just imagine if all the Indians consume everything that they're producing right now. That means there is nothing left for tomorrow's production. Okay, so Mr. Narendra Modi, you are mistaken when you are saying that we have to boost demand. Right, what he is saying that in order to boost demand and thus spur the block, boosting demand is not going to spur the block. Man, what we have to boost is saving. And unfortunately, all the saving that we Indians are, you know, kind of doing through our hard work is taken away from us by the bankrupt government via taxation and all other kinds of things. Outright looting in the form of inflation, for example. Another thing, Narendra Modi is saying that we have to increase purchasing power of people. How are you going to do that? On one side, he's saying that you know he wants to increase the purchasing power of you know Indian consumers, but on the same side, the government central bank RBI is very rapidly eroding that purchasing power via its inflationary monetary policy. So on one side they are eroding our purchasing power and on the other side they are saying that they want to spur, you know, increase the purchasing power. So there is always contradiction between what the government is saying and what actually it is doing. He has no idea. Modi has no idea what he is talking about. Right? If you want to increase purchasing power of, you know, people then this is what you need to do. First stop printing money. Right, tell RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan to immediately halt the printing, the creation of money out of thin air process. Immediately do that. Stop it. Wherever the money supply is, just keep it there. That's it. Right? That is what is absolutely required. Then you dismantle the RBI over a period of time, go back onto the gold standard or any commodity backed money standard, right, which will keep the money supply fairly stable or you know rising at a very fairly stable natural you know growth rate like you know gold for example one or two percent annual rate if you do that and then open up the market right dismantle all the government regulations dismantle all the bureaucracies that will increase the production process that will you know free all these businesses from the shackles Right now, all the people who were attending this Make in India meeting are all these business tycoons, these corporate fascist leaders like Ambani and Taras and Biralas. Only these fascist business leaders are going to basically profit from this whole thing. Any new budding entrepreneur will never go into them because these guys will never allow him to compete with them. So this is pure fascist policies of shaking hand, government shaking hand with the you know, big business houses and ultimately going to loot the consumers. There is nothing like making India over here. So you remove the RBI, stop printing money, allow, you know, dismantle all the regulation. What will happen is then the production is going to increase and because the money supply is going to be fairly stable, that will increase the purchasing power. That means the real income of people will then increase. They will be able to then lift them out for themselves out of poverty. So if you really want to do it, if you really want to increase purchasing power, and this is what you will have to do. And, and do you think, my dear reader, that Narendra Modi is going to do something like that? Absolutely not. He has no idea what he is talking about. He's just, you know, making all kind of slogans like Wi-Fi and Hi-Fi and FDI is for developing, first develop India. The copywriter, the person who is writing all these speeches, may be using all these kind of wild imagination and coming with all kind of stupid slogans, which is just going to fool the public. But what in action? Nothing in action, actually. As I said, Make in India program is you know no big deal. It's you know it's just another nationalist blunder by the. Hindu nationalist leader Mr. Narendra Modi. I don't, you know, only per people those who are going to benefit out of this is mostly this business corporate is right, Bambani's and Adani's and Bigla's and Tara's and all these guys. Ultimately, India, you know, as I said, if you want to make things in India, you have to create that kind of environment over here, and that is not possible as long as we have this 
huge big government you know mapping everywhere all types of our you know lies you know if as long as they are there nothing is going to happen okay so this is what i wanted to talk about today uh, i will come back again with another analysis of mine on this so called swatch what swatch bharat abhiyan so thank you very much for watching me and i'll see you later on good night